Hi guys, the AWS shared responsibility model is a really important topic for the exam. It comes up in quite a few questions. So you really need to understand this. So what this is about is in AWS, there is a shared responsibility between the customer, so the user of AWS, and then AWS themselves. So the customer has responsibility for the security in the cloud, and then AWS has responsibility for the security of the cloud. And if you look at the diagram here, it gives you some good examples of where, you know, these, where the line is between who is responsible for what. Now, at the most extreme, at the bottom here, we have regions, availability zones, and edge locations. And at the top, we have customer data. So that's quite an easy concept to understand. So at the very bottom, we've got the hardware, we've got the data centers, we've got the, the regions, we've got the availability zones, the physical presence of AWS, the physical systems that sit in those data centers, the staff that man and control and secure those data centers. So that's obviously an AWS responsibility. And then at the very top, we've got the customer's data. Now, as a customer, you're completely responsible for your data. If you lose your data, if you delete your data, if your computer gets a virus and your data gets destroyed, none of that is the responsibility of AWS. That's completely your issue. So then in the middle here, you know, we've got this delineation. So what I want to do now is make sure that you're clear on where the lines of responsibility are. So as I said, at the bottom, we've got regions, availability zones, and edge locations. This is the hardware and the AWS global infrastructure. And then we've got the compute, storage, database, and networking. So this is the physical servers and then the software layer that runs on them. So for instance, the compute servers in the AWS data center run an operating system. Now that's not your responsibility. AWS have to manage that. Similarly, the storage systems also run some kind of software and they have physical disks, they have networking configurations, and all of that is taken care of by AWS. Now for databases, it depends on the database, but in this case, for instance, DynamoDB is a database and you actually provision a table on it and then you're responsible for the data that you put in that table. But the underlying database and the hardware it runs on is all taken care of by AWS. And then there's the networking. So you have the physical networking equipment and then the routing and switching software that sits on top of that. And that's run by AWS. But now if we go up a layer, as a customer, you're responsible for the networking traffic protection. So how you encrypt your data and how you make sure it's going to the right place through route tables and so on. And also network and firewall configurations such as using security groups, network access control lists. So that's all your responsibility as a customer. And server-side encryption of your data. So for instance, encrypting your data on AWS in Amazon S3, that's a customer responsibility. So all encryption is your responsibility. And then you've got client-side data encryption as well. So encrypting data that's then being brought into AWS that you're encrypting yourself, that's your responsibility. And then operating systems. So if you're running EC2 where you've got Linux or Windows, you need to manage that operating system yourself. And as I said before, the networking and firewall configuration, if you're running a firewall on your EC2 system or you're using security groups and access control lists, then that's a customer responsibility. And then moving up another layout, we've got the platform, applications and identity and access management. So here we're looking at things like obviously the applications that you install on your systems, they're a customer responsibility and then the authentication and authorization system. So users, groups, roles, policies, that's all a customer responsibility. And then finally, the actual data itself that you store in AWS is something the customer is responsible for. So the shared responsibility model defines what you as an AWS account holder or user are responsible for and what AWS are responsible for. And this is in relation to security and compliance and it's a shared responsibility. So remember that AWS are res responsible for security of the cloud. That means protecting the infrastructure that runs the services offered in the cloud. And that includes hardware, software, networking, and facilities. 
Customers are responsible for security in the cloud, and that includes EC2, so network access control lists, security groups, operating system patches and updates, IAM user access management, including groups, roles, policies, and client and server side data encryption. We then have what are called inherited controls, and these are controls which the customer fully inherits from AWS. That includes physical and environmental controls. We then have something called shared controls. And this, for instance, is patch management, where AWS are responsible for patching and fixing flaws within the infrastructure, but as a customer, it's up to you to install patches on things like your EC2 instances. So that's a shared control. And then you have configuration management. So AWS maintains configuration of the underlying infrastructure devices, so the physical infrastructure that runs the cloud, but then you're responsible for configuring your own EC2 instances, your own databases and applications. Awareness and training is another one. So AWS trains their own employees, but as a customer, you must train your employees. So they need to know how to use these systems securely and properly. And finally, we've got customer specific controls, and these are solely the responsibility of the customer based on the application that's being deployed. So an example is a service and communications protection or zone security, because that requires a customer to route or zone data within different security environments. Now, finally, I just wanna give you a few examples just to make this all clear. So at the top here, we've got the customer responsibility, and then we've got the AWS responsibility. So the customer responsibility includes staff training. So that's that training and awareness. It includes maintaining your data, including encrypting that data. You've got to manage your own roles and make sure that you're securely applying the right permissions to your roles. You need to maintain your users. So passwords, make sure that people aren't sharing accounts, make sure that the permissions they have are correct. Enabling multi-factor authentication. You must update your own network ACLs to make sure you're protecting your subnets. And likewise, for your EC2 instances, you need to protect them with security groups and you must configure the rules there. Now, SSL encryption is about encrypting data in transit. And we'll talk about that in another lesson soon. But that's about encrypting the way that you encrypt a website that you're connecting to over the internet. And it's up to you to implement that type of encryption as well as what's called encryption at rest. So that's encrypting data that's stored. Patch management is something that's a customer responsibility and updating the operating systems of your EC2 instances. Also to make sure your application is available, things like auto scaling and elastic load balancing are a customer responsibility. And then underneath we've got AWS. So they run the physical data centers. They look after the data center security they look after the physical networking equipment like routers and switches. They have the physical servers and also the software layers that run on all these devices and the storage systems. When a disk drive needs to be disposed of, that's gonna be an AWS responsibility. And for the underlying servers and the database software that runs things like DynamoDB, that's, a cust sorry, that's an AWS responsibility and then the customer would be responsible for actually populating that table with data and looking after and managing that table. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding. It is something that you need to make sure you understand for the exam as it comes up in quite a few questions.